All right, we have Ibram from the UK, has lost 17 kilos in two months training here on Fitness Street. Tiger Muay Thai, yeah. starting his journey at 340 pounds, is that what we said? Was it 320 or was it 340? 320 pounds, something like that? Yeah, 100 and, 100, 45 kilos 145, for accuracy. Yeah. 145 kilos. So let's do the conversion, guys. He's flying out on Monday, Saturday afternoon, 20th of May, 2023. Yeah. Yeah. Thought I'd just bring this man on because he is from the channel yeah, okay. and I thought uh, bring him on to share a bit of his story, a bit of his backstory, what brought him out here right. and the kind of things that he's been up to in terms of training, right. uh, an injury that this man has had also Wow. Yeah. Uh, and absolutely. anything else you want to talk about. Right, so, yeah absolutely. A little bit of a backstory Ibram, you want to kick it off for us? Yeah, so guys, um, first and foremost I've got to give big props to this guy here because his video sort of shaped a lot of my journey to come out here and it's kind of shifted uh, my thought pattern on how to get out here um, for my fitness journey. So essentially, um, back home I was working a government job, which I ended up quitting uh, to embark my journey out here um, for myself. And it's changed my entire outlook coming out here. Um, I'm trying to sort of pinpoint and give you guys sort of like a storyline um, uh, that's more concise but um, essentially what happened was I realized um, just before coming out and I think this is a tell-all for any of you guys who may be feeling similar um, my energy levels day to day was start to get really low um, naturally I've always got a lot of energy um, and it's always kind of like gotten me, um, um, it's gotten me to be the most active on a daily consistent basis. But as time's gone on, um, I started to see it just like depleting. One, um, my manager mentioning to me that he started to have an onset of diabetes <laughs> um, early on because he realized his energies was going extremely low. He said that was his tell, tell sign, but he didn't change anything. For me, I just took it as, you know, this is what I need to do. I need to get out here and see if I can just be away from everything and sort of like re, uh, um, restructure my life in a way that's more, bro, give me a second. Put this. I'm gonna. It's all right, man. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Um, so, so essentially, your energy was depleting. Right. You're in a corporate job. Yeah. And something. You looked. You had a chat to your manager. Your manager was talking about pre-diabetes. Right. Did something like that trigger? Did that trigger that something? Kind of triggered that, me. Yeah. Did that, and subconsciously, did you go? I don't want to turn out. I don't want to, that to happen to me. Right. Is that how? It That's played exactly out? how it happened. So, literally, it would be like I believe I left my work on like, I resigned on like a Monday. And I booked my ticket that night, so there was no... <laughs> nice. <laughs> and because they wouldn't give you the time off? Or? It was essentially, it was, um, no, it was a combination of, yeah, they were turning around, mm. giving me time off, uh, at, which fair enough, it makes sense, I guess. It was, it, I didn't really give them a date that I was going to come back. <laughs> I said, I'll see how a month is, and then I'll see how I feel, right? Probably won't have your job, man, if you say that to your boss. I'm just going to go and leave, don't know when I'm going to come back. Your boss right. is going to be like, mate, don't come back. So, um, that kind of completely just shifted my whole perspective, because I was like, now I'm in it. Now it's up to me to do this. So you, your main reason for coming out here yeah. is for mainly health reasons. Right, mainly health reasons. To get reasons. your health back on track. Right, exactly. Because back home, yeah, we can, we can, mm -hmm. you know, through um, balanced diets and and working out. Absolutely, um, you can do it back home. However, there's nothing like the feeling of being amongst the community mm -hmm. where everybody doesn't matter how absolutely ripped they are or how you know. Um, how put together they seem everybody out here is here for the same goal mm. to get better mm. personal development mm. um and there's no better place that i'll be honest with you there's no better place in the world guys to do it than doing it out here did you know that before you came out here though see a lot of people don't know until they come out here 
and that's, how, and how that's cool the community right. is. So you're in your corporate, I want to go get back a little bit. Right. You're in your corporate job, yeah. you're about to quit. You've obviously done a bit of research, but why this place? Okay. Why, why here? Um, why did you pick this place? Okay, so, um, that's when you come in. <laughs> okay. A lot of Brad's uh, videos, because Brad's been, of course, as you guys know, content for X amount, several years now. And I was looking at the videos and I just remember it ringing, like looking at a few videos. And I don't know why for some reason, I don't know if you guys do this. You want, when you go into Brad's uh, videos, you end up going on the accommodation videos <laughs> first before even looking at what the facilities or why you're meant to be out here. So I ended up for some reason stumbling on one of the accommodation videos and then I was like, ah, oh, that's pretty nice. Out. When I first jumped on the plane, majority of you guys who are here and feeling like you're kind of thinking about coming out but you're not too sure or it seems a bit daunting, try, you can um, offline try to take some of Brad's videos. Right, and when you have no connection whatsoever, no data whatsoever, watch these videos because I'd done that on the plane to here, mm. so I was ready. Mm. So when I came out here, the tour, the hour video of him going down the um, soy, which is Fitness Street, guys, um, it changed my perspective because that showed me that everything he said, he literally that video was like the walking tour one right the walking tour that's it guys the yeah. walking tour and it was literally i'll link it up down below absolutely mm. the, one of the best views because i was watching that on the phone i felt so i'll tell you something i got here and i felt so comfortable mm. because i was like yeah i know mm. you know that's I, a very I, popular <laughs> video that one right, right. <laughs> for good reason i wasn't even going to put that one out actually <laughs> on that while we we're on that on that right. note it was 55 minutes long yeah. it was one take I didn't, no takes, just one single take, 50 something minutes. And I got to the end of that and I looked at it, I was like, I'm not putting this out, no one's gonna watch this. <laughs> and I, I only, I've only watched it once while right. I was editing it. Right. And then I published it, I have not watched it since. And I'm like, no one's gonna watch this, it's too long. But it's like one of the most popular videos. But I'll link it up down below because it gives um, a really good overview of Fitness Street and everything that's along the street. Absolutely. It's pretty much like a, you watch 50, it's almost an hour. It might even be 50, I can't I think remember. It's like 50, something like, so, so, almost between 50 minutes and an hour, we'll say. But yeah, it shows it's you how everything on Fitness Street is connected, like all the restaurants, all the gyms, all that kind Absolutely. of stuff. So when you get out here, like you pretty much feel like you've been here before. Right. After you watch that video. 100% what happened to me, so. Mm. So real quick, so yeah, yeah. you come out here, you, have you only been training at Tiger Muay Thai? Right, so I committed this journey for me. I was gonna do a little bit more. Um, initially, when I got here, I was doing free PTs and strength and conditioning with Peter, which is working out. Um, mm -hmm. So you had a plan coming out here? Right, you had a, right. So you had a training plan? Absolutely. Did you have a nutrition plan as well? Right, so... So tracking calories and macros? Right, so what Naveen done was, straight away, he knew that I was in a similar path. Um, he referred me to Peter at Tiger. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Peter was one of the, I think one of the reasons that, um, okay, before we get to Peter, I get here and I'm in the taxi mm -hmm. and I message Peter on WhatsApp mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm on the, um, I'm about to come in, can I see you? Mm -hmm. He's like, I think it was like the day of the barbecue beatdown. So he's like hectic because he's helping organize and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, uh, can you help me? And then Literally, I was stuck with him for two hours when he says I'll probably I'm free for like 15 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I was, so, as soon as I got to the front, he was waiting for me with the outside um, Tiger, which got a bit overwhelming in the barbecue beat. Now, so mm -hmm. I think for somebody first coming in uh, on Tiger, you just see everybody just sitting outside mm -hmm. and just relaxing right, right at the, where the reception is because mm -hmm. everyone's getting their tickets coming out. And I'm like, yeah. ah, What's going on? What do I do? What do I do? Um, Essentially, guys, if you're coming out, either Peter, he, I know he's happy to show you around as well. Um, but if ultimately, if you're coming out and you're not sure and you've just came, some people do pit stop from going from China or their backpacking or so forth. If you do end up here, go to reception and they'll definitely put you in line with somebody to give you a tour of just Tiger. So how many training sessions were you doing a day on average? and break that down for us. Okay, so on the first week. Mm -hmm. So you've been here for two months. Right. You so fly it on Monday. On, yeah, on the first week first it was week. 
um, free a day, which is what everybody recommended against, including Brad. Mm. So don't overexert yourself. But it depends on <laughs> the what, level you're at. What well, you're training right. to, like right. if you're doing a hard session, right? And then you're doing mobility or yoga, right? Right. That's There's the three thing. sessions, but they're they're different, right? So I was doing Peter's strength and conditioning, no matter what. That was my staple. Mm. That's one thing I wouldn't compromise on. Mm -hmm. So. Um, he set me up with time it would be like 11 or 12 and every single day for two months it was more or less even Pri when I busted my leg he was like kind of knocking Are these me. private sessions? Um, they were private sessions private yeah sessions. Pri th that was a private up session up in the gym the, up in that gym the Tiger Muay Thai gym yeah which yeah. was invaluable um, personally for me um, so just to get back in and the form and yeah lifting so lifting bench press Right, deadlifting, dead right. overhead press, all the yeah. major lifts. Even getting me excited thinking about it now, like. <laughs> but, yeah. So he got you into compound movements. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so that was one per day of that. One per day of that, and then three other um, sessions, which was Muay Thai. Muay Thai. Yeah. So. And that was that was, a, was that a group session? That I done the group session at first. Yeah. Which was the morning session from the beginner, uh, eight to ten. Beginner the Muay beginner Thai. Muay Thai. Yeah. yeah. And then I did two other PTs, yeah. and I think that's where. <coughs> it does sound like a lot, dude. Yeah, I know, I know. It sounded really, at the t you know on the first day and don't the second day. Don't do that. Day? <laughs> I, that, I'm gonna. I don't want to go into a rant. <laughs> don't do that. But yeah. No, no, no. You get injured. 100%. Was that the reason why you got injured? You reckon? Um, so he had it. So Ibrahim yes. had a foot injury. Yes. How far? How long were you here for before you sustained? Blind. <laughs> Maybe the end of. About two and a half weeks in. Two and a half weeks in, two, foot injury. Right, full on foot injury, guys. And you're out of training for how long? Um, okay, so the doctor told me go home, basically. <laughs> Back to the UK. Right, he said, you got a torn ligament. And I was Ouch. like, yeah, right. And he put a cast around it and I couldn't put, I couldn't even put my sliders on. This is what happens, guys, when you're fatigued and you're training. Um, he, he, he put a cast around my foot and then he turned around and told me you're gonna go home mm -hmm. he just said just go home mm. if you're here for training mm. you can't be here for training mm -hmm. you're gonna have to have that cast on for six weeks it's gonna take you additional two weeks mm. to even be able to move your leg after that mm -hmm. and i was like oh that doesn't sound encouraging at all i was like two and a half weeks in and i'm already feeling amazing guys right but when I got to the, this is what, what, I, what I mentioned um, earlier, it catches up with you. Like Brad said, after the week and a half, it started to prove that your energy goes really quickly, even with the electrolytes, because of the amount of work effort you're doing, depending on the level of fitness you're at. But a lot, even, even a lot of the guys, Brad can contest, like there's, um, a lot of people on who are doing even like at optimum shape and they're just doing two sessions a day to keep themselves like thingy but that doesn't mean that you don't walk or do you know if, if you're here to lose uh, a lot of weight what i replaced it with was walking mm. so that that drive where you feel like oh i don't really want to be sitting inside my room because i'm on fitness street you weren't walking with a foot injury though is that what you mean no, 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 not with foot injury. So Maybe before the... Right, right. Okay. I was out for two weeks then. I was going to say. Right, right. So I was out for two weeks. About a week in, I think Pete was like, every single day, let me come and see what you're doing. You know, are you okay? Mm. So forth. So almost like, I was like, yeah, I can't just leave. I, I, I knew at that point, when I was coming out of the hospital, I'm not going to leave without achieving something for mental clarity mm. like you weren't ready to go home i wasn't ready to go home even though the doctor was adamant he said mm. he, he want he wanted to give me a checkup twice a week mm. until i left um right so he, he and then what happened was not advisable for anybody don't do this i don't know what got into what got into me but Three days in, I couldn't find the shoe for my cast. So I just took the cast off. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> when I took it off, <laughs> when I took it off, I had to elevate it and so forth. But for some reason for me, I knew my foot 
if I did stretches. So literally I pulled up like YouTube and I did like uh, foot stretches for um, foot, in uh, foot injury, ankle injuries. And there was like an hour video and I was doing that like three times a day. Cause I was just like so adamant to leave and be able to just go out and eat. Are you adamant not to go back to the UK? Adamant not to go back to yeah, the UK. Yeah. Adamant to walk. Yeah. The walking was the crazy thing. I said, I was doing all this training and I can't even walk. That was the killer for me. It's tough like, when you're, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I can't believe when, I took when walking you're, for granted. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, like when you're injured out here, not everyone, not, obviously not everyone gets injured when they come um, out here. Right, right. right. But yeah, when, you, when you're over training, you know, you increase your risk of getting injured. And I've, I've had my fair share of injuries over the years out here. Right. Uh, overuse, overuse injuries and things. And my calf tearing, I've torn my calf several times, three times on one side, twice on the other side. Overuse injury. Um, yeah, like it could put you out of training for a week or two weeks. It's tough when you see other people training and you can't and you're right. stuck in your room. I've been sick also for two weeks. Probably, like as we film this now, I've only just started to get back to full recovery. Right two weeks in my hotel room doing nothing right. it's tough but you know it's hats off to you man for not going home and right. obviously everyone's got to follow the advice of their doctors if your doctor says right. go home everyone's you have to listen to you know you have to 100%. make your own decisions on whether you heed you that your Absolutely. doctor's advice or not Absolutely. but this man made a decision based on how his body felt and right. this and that that he right on what, how I yeah exactly yeah. how the body felt right? yeah and right. you've made a decision to stay out here because yeah. it was two and a half weeks in of a two month trip right and you I don't know how much time you spent planning to come out here how heartbreaking <laughs> so Imagine, but then right? but then you 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 surpassed you managed to get yourself back right. on track yeah so then how did you approach your training post injury okay so did you did, did you dial it back a little bit or uh, okay, don't yeah. tell me you went back to three sessions a day no, again. no 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 i started watching I started, <laughs> even when i started when i told brad afterwards it was like no that's too many um but yeah essentially um straight after okay so yeah straight after so two weeks go by and a week and a half in, I start going to start doing my strength and conditioning. Mm. I'm like limping into the gym. Upper body only. Upper body only. Mm. Um, a couple of days in, I, I start to feel like, okay, I can put pressure on this foot. Let's not, let's not, let's not completely go crazy, but I can put pressure on the foot. And then I started walking. Remember guys, even with the walk, I realized stretching. And you're, Stretch. Yeah. That that helped me so much. I was in so much agony. It was like. Um, and these are exercises that you did through watching YouTube videos, right? <laughs> right. Right. Watching YouTube. We've all done that. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> and the desperation. <laughs> Everything you need is on YouTube anyway. Right, but anyway, right. go on. <laughs> and uh, then um, little by little, I I think. It, a week after that, so let's say two weeks total, um, I start doing Muay Thai again. Mm. But I just boxing was only. Just boxing only. Makes sense. Right. Mm. And that was for a week, and then I started integrating pressure on my right leg, mm. and then it was just like gradual here or there, here or there. Mm. And I think it was like, let's say two weeks after, no, sorry, three weeks after the actual in injury. I started actually using both feet. I see. But again, you're taking it easy, right? And I'm stretching. I didn't know the importance of stretching. I kept reading about stretching, mm. and they were like, "Stretch, stretch before you go into Muay Thai. Stretch mm. before you do it. Stretch before you go for a walk." Mm. Which you never really think about. We walk every day, just how we do. But yep. they mentioned stretch, stretch, stretch. So that was. So would you say that that has been, that was in the two months you've been here, that was the biggest setback you faced? Okay, yeah. Um, I mean, if there's any I, other I, setbacks, feel there was free one, to share. There was one setback, um, which guys, it, it's not, it's not like it happens to everybody, but food poisoning. I got food poisoning and for some reason I ended up at the same hospital that messed up my leg and that was about <laughs> two weeks after. And spend more time in hospital than you did at Tiger Muay Thai. <laughs> and it was really and it and and um 
when I got there, this is Which one of the big things. It was the Bangkok Hospital. Oh, Phuket, yeah. Phuket, 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 Bangkok, Phuket, Bangkok Hospital. Hospital. It's a really yeah. good hospital here. Yeah. Right, yeah. and... Um, it's, called Phuk it's called Bangkok Hospital, but it's in Phuket. Right. <laughs> He exactly. Didn't, he didn't, he didn't, I know. I know. When I Google, he didn't fly to Bangkok. <laughs> That's will, what everybody's going to figure will get out. Confused. Oh, you went to Bangkok Hospital. You flew to Bangkok. No, man. It's Bangkok Phuket Hospital. <laughs> sorry, man. I just got. So, like, sorry, real quick. It, did it reminds me. I'm from Melbourne, right? No, yeah. So we have the Sydney My Music Bowl. Right, right, right. Sydney My Music Bowl is where they have like live music events. Yeah. Some people fly to Sydney, the other city. Yeah. Fly to Sydney to go to the Sydney My Music Bowl, <laughs> but the Sydney. My music bowl, spelt differently, is actually in Melbourne. Oh my god! <laughs> so they go to, go to the Sydney My Music Bowl in Sydney, but it's actually in Melbourne. But anyway, it's spelt differently. Like Sydney My Music Bowl is spelt differently to Sydney, right. the city. Anyway, sorry, right. man. Just right. a tangent there. Go on. Um. So you went to Phuket Bangkok Hospital. Yeah, and mm. then um, I get in there for food poisoning, mm. which I suspected was food poisoning. They mm. turned around and said, actually, it was severe dehydration. Okay. And... Were you throwing up? Throwing up really bad. Really, really bad. And there were like nothing... Like, is it bile? I know. Sorry guys, I hope you We'll end it there. I, I hope you're not... <laughs> I hope you're not eating while Carry we're on. talking about this. So you, you were not, so you food, so it was dehydration? Dehydration. Okay. Um, and did you, were you put on an IV drip or something? Right. So they put, um, exactly. Fluids. Fluids. Uh-huh. And that kept me, kept me strong and then. Um, how long, sorry, how long were you in hospital? Only, only for, luckily, only for a couple of hours. I was really good when they just put the IV. Mm. They said you really need to, it's funny your body's bouncing back. Mm. I don't know if it's all the work prior or the diet that I'm also on as well. That kind of set me, and I, I tried to say, how did I, I'm having, I'm, uh, in my head, I'm having enough water. They're like, no, you're not. Was this before your foot injury or after? This was after. After. Which was surprising. Cause, okay. Um, so they put you on a drip, you're in the hospital for a few hours. Right. Did that cost a lot of money, if you don't mind me asking? Um, Did you have travel insurance? Luckily. Or you just travel paid, insurance, guys. Did you just pay it out of pocket? Uh, uh, so you pay out of pocket, but you got your travel insurance, they, they they'll reimburse back. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing I didn't know, and it's a blessing, please get travel insurance, in some regard. Yeah. Please get travel insurance in some regard. I made a video on this. Absolutely. I'll link it up down below. Absolutely. They're who I'm with, so everyone's different. You got to pick whoever. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and it's, it changed everything for me because you turn around and go into Bangkok Hospital. The first thing they say is, "Do you have travel insurance?" <laughs> they do normally, like if you're if you're conscious, of course. Do yeah. you, do, you, do, you, do you have do you have uh, travel insurance? So that. Um, I was like, yep, yeah. and they're like, okay, that's fine. What you're gonna have to do is pay first, and they should pay you back. They will, yeah. They will. Within provided, provided that you you, you meet the rec yeah claims yeah. process. And also points. that little invoice they give you on the way out, guys. You keep that. Keep that. Yeah, please, you'll send that. Please to keep that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you keep that. Don't throw it away. And actually, on that note, sorry. Um, yeah. Before I forget, yeah. um, the physio fit here on Fitness Street. The physio, there's a, phys a physiotherapist on yeah. Fitness Street here. They'll actually write up a proper statement uh, and thing to give to your travel insurer. Ah. Yeah, they oh, told so, me this. Yeah. Yeah, so if you, if you need physio on Fitness Street, you go to Physio Fit, they'll write out all the documentation for your travel insurance provider. Oh, cool. yeah. Just to keep that, that in mind. Remember that, guys. Side note, because I didn't note. even know that. Now I'm going to be using that. If I, hopefully, I don't need to use it. But yeah, <laughs> just good I to do, keep in mind. Good you know? to keep in mind. Just 100%. to keep all your invoices and all that stuff if you, if you go and see a doctor and stuff like that. Right. Because you'll, be, you'll need all that to make claims. 100%. Anyway, so, so you, you're dehydrated. They put you on a drip. Three hours later, then you left the hospital. And then from then, three litres of water, no matter what. Yeah. Minimum. So Electrolytes as well. Yeah. Shout out to Brad. Yeah. So I think that's when I was using it mainly. Yeah. Uh, the D-Light. D-Light, yeah. yeah. So, there were your two biggest setbacks on this trip. Right. So, where did you, where were you eating um, okay. for your nutrition, Right. for your nutritional needs? Where were you eating along Fitness Street or, or anywhere else? Okay, so my go-to. That you would recommend? <laughs> uh, Mr. Joms. Yeah, Mr. Joms. Absolutely amazing. Um, I made a video on that, I'll link it below. Right, amazing. Barbecue um, chicken, rice and broccoli. Get me hungry, Brad. 
we're gonna have to go eat. <laughs> um, yeah, Mr. Joms. Mr. Joms. Um, Next one. Ali's pre. Ali's, Ali's was... barbecue. Uh, Ali's barbecue. Ali's yeah. barbecue. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, filling station was pretty good for me because you can just get chicken and the Buddha bowls. Oh, the the carnival menu. Right. Yes. So you can literally get. I've never seen them just do it like that. And yeah. On their menu, it's, it's called like, a carnival menu. Yeah. So if you're vegetarian, like, forget about it. And the Buddha bowl. And the Buddha bowl. I, I couldn't really finish it. Which was, is not vegetarian. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. It's a bit of chicken on top and then yeah. the dressing salad. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, we're speaking to meat eaters. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Um, but um, but there are vegan and vegetarian options on fit, on Fitness Street, so don't worry about it. Quite that. a few, quite a few. Yeah. So so so, um, so Mr. John's Ali's Barbecue yeah. Filling Station. Yeah. And where else? Or that um, was it. Tony's is pretty good as well. Tony's restaurant. Yeah. Um, they're the main ones. I think there was a main. They were the go-to's. Mm. Like you couldn't think of anything. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say. You've got so many options, right? Mm -hmm. It was it was really really like mm. I think. Mr. John's was amazing, and it was like, again, if you are gonna order off Grab, for some reason, Grab the Grab app. The Grab app. Sorry, there's yeah. an app, guys. You can order. It's like Uber get, Eats here. Get the right? app. Yes, yeah. yeah, so Uber Eats. Off, off. Okay. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, get that app before you come out here. Hundred <laughs> right, percent. Because we're on a fitness trip, but sometimes you get lazy. You don't right. want to be. <laughs> it's like pouring rain in the wet season and you don't want to like go out in the in the rain but right, right. I don't do that I mean I feel like I've done that like twice in my life right, I don't right. even have the grab app anymore right, right. Yeah, 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 it's better to just go like <laughs> anyways <laughs> but if you do Mr. Jobs um He's only on at set times. Whenever he gets busy within the actual restaurant, oh, he shuts down. He shuts, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. He's like, sometimes I want to go to Mr. Jobs and he shut. He shut, like, dude. It's and, like, it's, and it says, oh my god, but it's, it says that you're still open. I know. No, no, he shuts no. when he wants to shut. Right, right. Jobs is tight. He's on island time. <laughs> he opens when he wants to open, shuts when he wants to shut. He's living the life. It's <laughs> great though. When you when you manage to catch the restaurant when he's open, it's it's right. great. It's absolutely. Um, yeah. So if you were starting this journey all over again, yeah. Right. I know you're coming back out here. Yeah. So for the guys, gals back home that had never been out here before, what would you say to them if you were doing this all over again, knowing what you know now? Yeah. What would you do differently? Okay. For these guys watching. Okay. Um, They've never been here before. Guys, I know it's really, really tempting when you get here. The biggest thing is make sure you remember to um, do limited classes or PTs. Because I was doing crazy amounts. Maybe, I guess at the start I was doing four a day. Which Brad, the funny thing is I watched that video twice and it didn't register with me mentioning the PT. I'm not saying this anymore. <laughs> I, I've said this enough, man. I talk about overtraining like 100%, 100%, all the time. 100%, 100%. You do, you guys, you guys do you. Nah, but 100%, guys. You get injured don't, otherwise. Don't, don't. You're going to get injured you and get then injured. you'll be out. And then and you're going you're... to be wishing to walk. Yeah. This is how bad it got. And uh, seriously. Um, just take it easy. Just take it when easy. When you first come out of your first week. Right. Especially if you're coming from like the Nordics. The cold, the cold. The cold, like right. Canada or right. New Zealand or... And, and it doesn't mean that you're less driven. That's one thing I had yeah. to tell myself. It doesn't mean you're less driven because you're not doing every single class or this person, you've just come out of a class and um, I met so many great people out here, um, just off the cuff. Oh man, yo, I'm just going into this class. Come with, you know, come to this class. And, and it happens a couple it of times, happen. right? It does happen. You get roped into things. Right, exactly. So, peer pressure. Peer pressure, 100%. And it's like- um, I got work to do. <laughs> I got work to do, and then you go back to your room and sleep. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. You gotta say something. When I first come out here, like, honestly, I look, I've done all this. You know, right. I've made these mistakes, like, you know, back in you know, 2016, yeah. 2015. Right. To come out and train hard, non stop. Right. Session after session after session. 100%, right. I don't hurt myself, this, yeah. like, food poisoning, 100%. longer recovery times, not right. sleeping properly, restlessness. Irritableness, like, right. and, and going into your training sessions fatigued and sore and uh, sore joints. Everything, Brad. Sir. All those things, Everything man. It's all sick. symptoms of overtraining. Hundred percent. And overtraining is a thing out here, guys. And it just shortens your trip out here. That's all it does. It does. If you feel like, like after I I got off my injury, I just done the one PT, and then 
here or there I would do maybe an extra PT mm. when I knew my body was like mm. at optimum yeah. right and yeah. there's all there's uh, my biggest thing is when I first got here I wanted to turn around and be like going like Brad because I saw Brad reviewing like nearly majority of mm. the soy right and I was thinking oh, okay but I, I overexerted myself to a point where I was like okay I can't Going to Dragon right now doesn't make sense. Let me be up to I don't I want to enjoy it. I don't want to be thinking my thinking mm. about my leg while I'm kicking yeah. or punching and so forth. So like, yeah. and electrolytes. Yeah. Blimey. So yeah. De dehydration here. Electrolytes. Yeah. Uh, it's everything. Yeah. Brad speaks about it a lot. Yeah. And there's a reason for it. You need to. The mm. heat mm. combined with thing. And if you're a bigger person with a lot of weight as well, even your normal person, of course, you need to always uh, hydrate. But if you're a bigger person, and you're feeling like you're under like this humidity and it's like overbearing and you're training make sure you're having enough water make sure you're having 100% you're going to need electrolytes out here 100% yeah, yeah like even bring them from home you know bring, right bring right proper uh, electrolytes you know magnesium potassium sodium right. all that sort of stuff bring those electrolytes with you um, out here or you can get them here at yeah. the pharmacy as well yeah um, but look Look, my, I, I sort of a little bit nuanced with my advice on the overtraining. You know, people are coming out here for say just a week, yeah, uh, and that's it, or two weeks. Then go a little bit harder, right? Uh, right. Yeah, full that's a good empathy. Bit. Yeah, full 100%. empathy. You know, you're only for a week or so, or three, four days even. That's good. Um, yeah. You know, by the time you ease into it, you've got to go back home. Yeah. And when, if you just come out here for a week and then train hard right. on the first day, then you can recover when you get back home. Hundred percent. But I guess. You know, when I talk about taking it easy and taking it slow and one hard session a day or, right. or one and a half yeah. hard sessions right. with some mobility and yoga and that kind of ice baths and this, right. this kind of stuff and proper rest and proper hydration. This is more for the guys that are out here for the long term, you know, two months, six months. Right. I was out here for six months last year. Right, yeah. Uh, and I've been here for almost two months on this trip. Yeah. Um, and there are days where I just, I just don't want to train. Right, exactly. And I just right. let, I just don't, I don't punish myself, I don't put myself, I don't get upset with myself, I just let it go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But that's not, you know, I, I just, but that's part of recovery, yeah? No, 100%, absolutely. What you don't, what you're not and doing. It's normal. In, like, it's, when you're, it's what normal, you, right. People underestimate this, like, what you're not doing in the gym, that's, that's like where your body's recovering, your tissues yeah. are repairing themselves. When you're sleeping, your body's repairing itself. That's why it's important that when you're not training, you're getting proper nutrition around here, right? Make sure you get enough protein, make sure you're hitting your macros. Uh, if you're tracking calories, do that. But more or less, you make sure you get the, the nutrition that you need yeah. so that, and proper rest. Right, so right. your body's pro and then hydration, all these, all these things put together. Yeah. I mean, means that you can go hard the next day. Right. If, you don't have, if you don't have proper recovery, you're gonna go into your next session Fucked. Amazing. Just to touch on what Brad said, recovery. That's one of the biggest it's things. It's important. Please, it's so you important. need to sleep, guys, as well. This, we 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 all been a testament to having a couple of hours sleep. It was, hasn't been too good. Um, the rain's going crazy at night, and mm. you're <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you come you come in tired because you haven't right. rested well. Right. And then you just train. Right. At your own. At your own you listen so. to your body, yeah. right? It's all about like listening, helping yourself right. awareness, like 100%. how much. You, you know, like don't go maybe 80% or 60%. Like I've been sick for two weeks, you know, I've not been well, yeah. like I've been in, basically in bed for two weeks. Right. And it's only been, this is my third day back to training. And and, you get, and, yes. and I'm getting back into training. I've only been doing like 50%, 60% of what I usually, 70% of what I usually do. Blimey. Even though people around me are training hard, I just, in my zone, listen to my body, don't care what anybody else is doing. I just want to get myself back on track and listen right. to my body and that kind of stuff. So in 2017, right. I was doing that. I was training out here. I was doing the morning Muay Thai session. Yeah. I've dialed it down since then, right? Right, right. So right. I was doing the 8 till 10 a.m. session. Okay, yeah. And then I have a shower and whatnot and yeah. eat something proper. Yeah. And then I sleep for three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah back yeah, in this... my hotel room. Oh, my God. And I set my alarm for three hours. Yes. Because of circadian rhythms every 90 minutes, you do a full cycle. Right. Rhythm. So for three hours. No more, no more than three hours, sometimes 90 minutes. Right. So 90 minutes or three hours, so like I set my life for every 90 minute increments. Yeah. And then I wake up after three, 90 minutes or three hours, and then I get ready for my afternoon Muay Thai session at three to 5 p.m. 
But I don't do that anymore. And it, sounds, it sounds like such a dream. But it, it helped a lot. But like it helps the power a lot, napping, right? it does, right. you know, three hours sleep, a bit uh, more than a power nap. But I, it helped me a lot yeah, to get through that afternoon session. 100%. But I don't, I don't do the split sessions like that anymore. Yeah. Like, I don't do four hours like that anymore. Right, right. You know, right, I, yeah. okay, sorry, I'm just going to bounce off that. Yeah. So I might do two hour Muay Thai group session. Yeah. I probably won't sleep. Yeah. I'll just have a shower, eat yeah. like maybe some fruit or something. Right. Because I can't eat straight after. I can't eat properly. I know, yeah. Straight yeah. It's hard to it so hot. It feels different out here as it's well. It's so yeah. hard to eat. Right, right. Like rice and 100%, chicken right, right. In, a, in, a, in a hot climate. Like, <laughs> it's hard, man. Oh, that's it's not such easy. a good point. That's actually a good so point. So I have like a maybe a protein <laughs> shake yeah. or like yeah. I have a some fruit or some something fruit, like that. Something yeah. light. Yeah. And then about an hour later I'll have proper sustenance yeah but then in the afternoon i might just do a one hour pt or now i'm starting to do jiu-jitsu yeah so i might do one hour or like maybe some wrestling or something like that right yeah you know, but just like one wrestling. hour yeah but anyway <laughs> right. so, so so power napping i remember in the video brad mentioned about the pts you guys might have remembered when he turned around and mentioned oh um the pts invaluable Please, if you are out here and it's fine, you want to do all the classes, mm. please try to do a couple of PTs. For, right. for, Muay Thai, for Muay Thai? For Muay Thai. Or for strength For training. Muay Thai. For me, strength and conditioning was everything. Yeah. Because it balanced me out. I, got, I saw myself getting stronger in Muay Thai with my punches and my kicks. Like it just went like hand in hand. Yeah. Um, that's what I've done. I've I done the strength and conditioning for an hour. Um, for you guys, it, it, if you, if you don't want to go um, that route, you can turn around and just go to the gym and work on the muscle groups and so forth and your right. normal gym, right? Um, it, but ultimately, it really helped me with the guidance mm. and it helped me with the Muay Thai. So, yeah. yeah. So how many, how many Muay Thai, you've been here for two months. Yeah. How many Muay Thai privates have you had? Um, okay, so... And just while you're thinking there, <laughs> so Ibram has never done had never done Muay Thai prior to coming out here. Never. Never. So first time doing Muay Thai was here at, in Thailand, Tiger Muay Thai. Crazy. So how many right. thereabouts, how many private, how many private Muay Thai sessions have you done? Okay. Thereabouts. Um, okay, so roughly... Did you get this on a package? Was this a package of... I remember... Like ten, pack of 10 or something? Yeah, yeah. So with the, uh, with the Muay Thai PTs, I ended up getting the pack of 10. The best thing ever was coming through Tiger, yeah. and come out Tiger Muay Thai. A lot of this journey has just been surreal. Yeah. You know, it's just surreal to me, to be honest with you. Like, even thinking about the progress, meeting Brad out here was kind of like, guys, you, you meet, if, if, if you're looking into this, you'll meet so many amazing people. I'm fortunate I met the guy who I was watching literally the videos for years and years and years and years and said, I'm gonna come out here, I'm gonna come out here. If you really feel like it comes down to, should I? or you have any doubts because you know um you're coming out alone or so forth i came completely myself um just before i came out i was looking at videos like you're looking at the videos of us right now you know um trying to absorb enough information and so forth the best thing i've ever done was literally when it comes to fitness as well is come out here and that's not like an overselling of anything or so forth it's literally me telling you like um this place has been something else for the last two months now ultimately i've got um i've got ways to go i'm very blessed at where i'm at but i've got ways to go um but mentally it's just down it's, it's down the street Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's down the street. I know what to, you, you get put in with so much of these vices and you meet so many amazing people out here. Um, and the experiences of being, the experience of being out here is one I wouldn't replace. So even if you're thinking about coming for um, a week or two, get out here. Mm. Ideally, if you're like me, I, w I don't want to bite my own tongue here, but if you could come out at least a month, even better, mm. even better to really you know embark on this. Um, you can quit your job. <laughs> even better. 
I'm not telling you guys to quit your jobs, but <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we gotta, you got to assess that 100% on your okay. terms and financials and things. But 100%, right. But yeah, look, if you can come out here, as long if you, the longer you come out here, the better. That's what right. Ibram's trying to say. And, and you can reap, um, you're not missing out on anything as well, but you can always come back. But I just oh, want always. you to always come back, yeah. um, which a lot of people end up coming back. Yeah. Brad's a testament, but Brad... Oh, it's true, right, but recurring people you see constantly, right? And, man, you, you like meet people, right? Right. And it's like, because you, you bump into people, you bump, you see a lot of familiar faces right. around to you. 100%. But you don't realise that they've gone, that they've actually left the country for three months. When you bump it, it was like you, it's just like you saw them yesterday. Right. Or out last week. Right. You know, but they've actually left the country, they've done a, right. they've gone back to their corporate job or whatever, 100%. and then they've come back again. Right. Because that's how frequently... People come back all the time, man. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's crazy. One of my friends I met off the journey, just to add to that, um, they went to Bali. Mm. Um, and it must have been a week, and mm. they're back again, for good reason. <laughs> so, you know, they, 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 there's something, there's a latch in the community here where you, when you end up getting here, oh, when you, just to finish that for you, yeah, when you end up getting here, it's just, you just want to, you always want to be here. Um, I'm leaving fairly soon, mm. unfortunately. But fortunately, my intention is to come back, right? And, and get the most out of it. But I won't stop this journey back home. I want to c come back uh, on, a, on a level field. But guys, just to mention about um, one of the things also that I'm actually grateful for as well, on this whole street, it literally is just one big street of fitness. Like, I know there's like an, um, you hear it and it doesn't, it's a, the street's quite big to be fair, if you think about it. Um, but it's literally, the whole street is fitness. Everybody's going to and from their sessions. You, you know, you've got Unit 27, Dragon. Top team, Ratchet so much stuff going on at once, right? And every you see everybody in the same path as you. It's kind of like you can just stand in the middle of the uh, of the soy, which is the street, and you can just like see everybody just going to their fitness classes, going to their on their fitness journeys. Everybody's sort of like on the same path. It's kind of like almost mm. like a motivation enough, right? Mm. Like you're like yeah, like I think also. Playing on that, that's what also got me a bit messed up because I ended up doing more classes than I was supposed to mm. because I'm seeing that as well. And mm. I'm seeing, and also the pro mm. fighters, you, get, you have a lot of love and respect for some of the people come out just who, who are um, either on the path to being a professional fighter mm. or they are um, professional fighters because the level of respect and um, you, that you gain for them out here mm. and amazing people who mm. are just like on the same journey as you but the the, the level of like their focus mm. and it almost is something else right but so, so just um i was going to ask you this question before yeah and then you've helped me remember that question so okay. so did you feel intimidated when you first yeah did you feel in, you know where i'm going with this <laughs> yeah yeah did you feel intimidated when you first came out here you came out here on your own and you looked at these pro fighters and you looked at guys that are super shredded and this and that on their own journeys, of course. Yeah. Did you feel intimidated by that? No. You didn't? Which I, I personally, I don't know if... Um, Some people do. They do. Yeah. And I can understand the perspective. In fact, a lot of people do. Right. And um, the reason... And, oh, sorry. Did you say initially before I got out here? Uh, or did you no, mean when I, when when, I got here? When you got here. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And like walking through Tiger Muay Thai. Right. Or even just down the street, like right, you know, right. and you saw these shredded people and right. like, or pro fighters, and I mean, you got UFC guys that come right. here, you got one championship athletes training, right. like, everybody's training, like, wow, of different yeah. federations and whatnot. Did you feel intimidated? Okay. When you saw all that? when you do see that initially, mm. you you are gonna feel a bit of like, oh, okay. What am I? Did you? What am? Um, what am where, I doing here? And where am? Yeah, where am I? Yeah. You know, like it almost is a a little bit of a shell shock shell shock that's mm. actually spot on yeah when, when it initially yeah when i got here initially looking, yeah initially i was like thinking, wow um i don't know with me it just helped i, I think i started speaking to most of the profiles before mm. 
<laughs> I tried to get to know the yeah. proprietors, so I was like, what do I do uh, here, you know, to get to that? Yeah. As a, even as a joke, like, that's naturally just how I am, I guess. But it's like, literally, what do I do to get to that? And they'll be like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you realise they're the most... Nicest people. Right, right. So through conversation, that helped put you at ease. Right. And make you feel more comfortable. Right, and also, mm. if you are having a fear... Um, I was also walking when there was a beginner class going on. And I seen some of the beginner class and you can sort of see, it's hard to see the distinction because everybody's so focused. Mm. Everybody's focused on, mm. on, on whatever they're doing. So mm. you feel like, am I in the right place? Because all these people are determined. Doesn't matter what shape they're in. There's a lot no, I mean, of, there's someone screaming over there right now. Right now, right. You can hear it in the background. <laughs> but it, it, you, you, then you realize the levels. You realize, oh, I'm okay. But you have to just be around, you know, so, like taking the environment a little bit the atmosphere mm. but initially you're gonna feel like that and it's completely normal but they're not it's i don't have to really like yeah so you, you got to know them you got bit. to know them you and through conversations with these athletes really cool people, right? you started to feel more comfortable being here not really yeah and then you probably met other people also on a very similar journey to right, you right right that also made you feel more at ease right is that true maybe that was exactly what it was i think uh, on the first day I ended up getting here, I started, um, after the tour was done, um, I started speaking to random traders, <laughs> it's just me, mm. random traders, oh what class is this, what class mm. is that, mm. I was, and they're really really friendly, some of them of course, if they look like they're instructing the class, <laughs> not right now, Yeah. but you can literally get the, uh, some of the trainers who were just on the outs, outlines or they're next to whatever, <laughs> like they're, they're not they're, there, they're, they're, just, they're, they're just there. You right? have a conversation with right, them. Right, you can have a conversation with them. And please, if you do come out here, the intimidation factor at first, of course, there's guidance, you, can, you know, there's guidance for, um, through that, uh, Brad videos. There's, if you really want to know what it's like, Please look at the, the point of view videos during your PT sessions because they really help me. Mm. Want to do PTs? I would, when I got here, I would have just initially. Oh, this is a big thing. Initially, I just wanted to do fitness classes. Mm -hmm. um, um, and uh, sorry, the, and the Muay Thai um, classes. I never really thought about the PT. And then when I saw the PT, I was like, because of Brad's videos, I was like, mm. sounds pretty. That looks pretty good. And it's like. And they and your trainer sort of knows your kind of pace. Mm. So if you're intimidated with the PTs, because some of the videos when we look at it, we're like, whoa, that guy's a beast. But it's almost like the comp is 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 because you're with that trainer, it you you get you push yourself even more like in that in that brief burst of moment that kind of helps you. Like so don't don't get intimidated by watching the videos like oh that guy's PT looks amazing mm. you know um, you see a professional fighter we, which is all around us normally they're training you can hear it in the background um, constantly but everybody's so focused on what they're doing that um, when you're focusing on your what you're doing no one cares no one cares. Yeah, I know it's conscious as well. If you're bigger, you're thinking this person's looking at me. Well, that person's huge. Mm. Really, that person. You know what? How much respect people actually give you? It's that self that how many how much respect people have just come to me, came up to me and said, "But you're amazing. You came out here." And one thing: don't lose your curiosity, guys. Like whatever it is, whatever you're curious about, whatever, if you're thinking about wrestling and you're looking at the list, just go to the class and look at one before you join in. So if you feel you, like you're intimidated, go. if there's intimidation there, the intimidation factor, just come and check out the class. And the next time you know what to sort of anticipate. I've realized some people do with that as well. So, okay. So while you've been here for two months, you've done, you've done, a, you've done strength and conditioning privates, you've done Muay Thai group yeah. classes. Yeah. And Muay Thai privates. Yeah. So have you tried other, have you for yourself to eliminate I tried to that do, intimidation, have you tried? I tried to do uh, BJJ, it didn't go too well because my back from Muay Thai was a little bit. Okay. <laughs> and then that kind of put me off, I was like, okay, uh, not put me off doing anything else, it would just put me off at, because I'm, I'm, I'm so regimented, just because I had my injury, I was a little bit more, mm. alright, be a little bit 
to do music. Yeah, weary. Uh, also, I wanted to do wrestling, and I thought I know what's going to happen to me there. Let me shed a little bit of weight and get a bit stronger as well. So I didn't go straight for the wrestling, but the wrestling was really, really. Uh, it's hard. Yeah, it's so, a hard class. And, and, but you should definitely try it. No, no, definitely Back to your try point it. Yeah. about trying the things that look intimidating, because right. when you try them, you realise that. They're not as scary as what they look. They're not as scary. Like as Western well. boxing, did you try that? Yes, yes. How did you find that? Oh yeah, Western boxing, sorry, I should come in line and line, I should have said that. Yeah, but Western boxing is like really, really good, really intense. Yeah. Um, K1, um, did you try that as well? K1 K kickboxing? K1's the only one I did it. I got my shin pads the day I messed up my leg. <laughs> then after that, it sort of just went. <laughs> so you're going from you're doing mainly upper body after after all that. Right? After that, yeah. yeah and yeah. then I, I thought just to keep me balanced if I and also I did for me anyway, I know I'm gonna be coming back out. Mm. I knew that when I get down a little bit in weight and my uh, stamina as well, I'm what, like close to where I want it to be as well, I could just I, I wanna try all of that, I wanna leave something for mm. the next journey. Sure. Right. Like right. how Brad's doing, like he's doing the BJJ now. Yeah. And it's like it's like really you know what I mean? Like, I just want to leave something. You can't do everything, right? And, and, and you you can't do to, everything yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the thing. You can't do everything well. You can't well. do everything well. Right. So, over the years, like, while you mentioned that, I'll just talk a bit for like, five seconds. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Like, over the years, I, I pick focus points, right? So, like, yeah, like, pre historically, it's been Muay Thai, and, like, that's been my main focus. Yeah. And then on this trip specifically, it's been, yeah, more. Jiu Jitsu now. Right. I'm not, I don't mean, know, really addicted. And I found, honestly found that intimidating. That's epic. When you speak right. about intimidation, right. I found Jiu Jitsu very intimidating. Right, right. Because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what the hell that's going right. on here. Right. Like, they call it the human chest, right? Right, because right. It's like, you, you can hold this grip here, then you step over with this knee, and then the head position's here, and then you put the weight down on the shoulder, then you move around with your feet. It's like a 50,000 things going on. 100%. Like, yeah. It's so. It was so intimidating for me when I first started it. Yeah. That was last year. I started dipping my toes into it last year. But now I feel much more comfortable going into it. Right. And like I'm still bottom of the barrel, right? You know? But, yeah, but you, it comes yeah. back to number one, trying everything to just ease the nerves off because no one's good at everything when they first start. 100%. Right? 150%. Like, come on, yeah. even the pros are doing it. They, they Everyone starts at zero. 100%. Everybody starts yes. at zero. That's the thing. Yeah, absolutely. How do you go from zero to one? Well, <laughs> you jump in right. and you give it a crack. Right, right. That's what we say in Oz. In Oz, <laughs> you give it a crack, mate. That's give it a go. Take. That's such a good Give take. it a go. In Oz, we say, give it a go. <laughs> give it a go. 100%. Yeah, give it a go. 100%. Give it a go. And just don't worry about what other people think or say because everybody was in a similar situation to you when you first started. Right. That's, yeah? oh, that's, that's number one. Brad summed it up so well, I'm guys. Wake, I'm I, I, waking I up. I spent 15 minutes trying I'm to articulate up. that. I'm waking up. I'm waking up. <laughs> Number two, it's about uh, also focus points. So if you do plan on returning here time and time again, yeah. is with your trips, go, I'm going to focus mainly on getting ready for a fight. Yes. For Muay Thai. Yes. Or I'm going to get ready for a Jiu Jitsu thing, competition. Right. Right. And I'm going to only focus on Jiu Jitsu or kickboxing or you know, whatever. So, or maybe you want to focus only on strength and conditioning training. Right, right, right. And you only want to train S and C. Right. And then you want to do that for four weeks and then you go home and then you take what you've learned here back home with you and then you come back out and you do, I don't know, MMA. And right. you put everything together. Right. S and C, you put your kickboxing or Muay Thai and you're boxing everything all in one package. All in one package, yeah, absolutely. It, it did ultimately make me d decide that, okay, I'm not gonna be able to fit everything that I wanna do mm. in here. And consciously I was like, no problem because you ca you ca you came here for a goal and it's okay to have several goals in the future. Yeah. It's, it's so cool, like the wrestling, I definitely wanna come back and do the wrestling at some point, yeah. you know. Uh, um, some people, like, there's, there's a, so many different goals in fitness, right? right. Like, it's, there's performance-based goals, there's body composition goals, there's martial arts-related right. goals, there's, you know, cardiovascular goals. Yeah. I don't know, you want to get your heart health, you want to be, right. you're, you're pre-diabetic. Right, right, right. And you right. want to try and get the A1C levels down because 100%. your A1C levels are too high. 100%, And that's right. going to be your goal. Quite a few people as well here. Or right, your right. cardio, like, or your, your lipids are too high, you want to bring that down. Right? Or you want to improve your VO2 max. Yeah. Or you want to improve your speed and agility or mobility. Yeah. Like there's so many different goals. And to your point, you just pick one or two yeah. and you run with that. 
you can't do everything well. Right. But look, I'm going on a bit of a bit No, of a no, ramble, no, but it's so but true. I, it's but so I think, true. like, if you've never been here before, yeah. definitely do try a little bit of everything, right? Yes. If you don't know what K1 kickboxing is, you've never done it before, right. jump in the class and do it. Never done Western boxing before, 100. jump in and do it. 100%. Um, because if you want to lose weight, you can pretty much do anything in terms of training, as long as you have your calories under control, and you will move the needle. Yes. Right? You will move the needle. I love that. And you then will move the needle. You will right. move the needle. <laughs> um, but um, over time, you may want to have focus points with your training. And, and for me, that changes over the years. I've gone from body composition related goals yeah. and that kind of stuff, and then more performance based goals now. And I want to get more into jiu jitsu. That's, that's, an effort, that's a yeah. separate goal. I want to get better at that. Ultimately, I feel, ba you know, based on the intimidation factor, don't get. Um, one of the biggest things that I kind of had uh, reservations um, early on was is this place actually for people who are trying to lose weight? Mm. Like if you're, if you're absolutely big, mm. doesn't matter how big you are, I'm pretty big, but if you turn around and um, kind of feel that, oh, you know, there's, there's this going on, there's that going on, everybody looks like they're in shape. You're looking at the videos, you're looking at the trailer videos from majority of the street, and you're thinking, oh, okay, um, they're the most fittest people I've seen. They say it's a boot camp, but everybody in the camp is ripped. You know, like, if you feel like there's anything like that, it's completely, what you've, what you've seen is, I feel, it's more for people such as yourself. I feel like there's such a, um, the marketing, for the bigger people isn't fully there. Yeah. Which is understandable, but the main consensus, everything stems from the Muay Thai anyway. Like generally from, from, from Tiger anyway, from, from uh, historically. Um, but the, the fitness this, for you big guys, please, I, and big girls. I hear please. what you're saying. You know There's not enough saying? video content right. around bigger guys in the videos trying to get shredded right and yeah i mean i i take responsibility it's hard to get guys that are bigger on a camera to share their story <laughs> that's why one of the reasons dude it's one of the reasons why i got you on because yeah. you know you're 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 a walking testament Thank of you. someone that's come out at 145 kilos on your own to take on a journey in in a foreign country yeah. in this heat you come from the uk yeah like, dude, the weather is chalk and cheese, man. Like, the UK... It was snowing when winter. the day I got here. Like, <laughs> Yeah, was... so, like, but you're, you're a, a walking testament yeah. of someone who's, you've really, you've quit your job, you've taken a one-way ticket, you've been right. out for two months, you got injured, yeah. then you were in hospital. Right. You've been in hospital twice. Blimey. 145 kgs, you've lost 17 kilos through all of that. Somebody make a movie right now. <laughs> so, 100%. So, so what I'm saying is that you are an inspiration for you, the guys and gals that are plus size, yeah. if you want to call it that. Plus that, size, oh, that's, that's a better, yeah, Well, you know, this us, political yeah. correctness, right, 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 you know, right, 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 whatever, plus, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I'm like big girls and guys. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but that nah, plus size, it, so anybody who feels like that, exactly what I'm yeah. saying. This, like, this place is for you as well. And remember, you know, goal-wise, um, if there's anything, you know, when you, for those who do finally make the step and come out here, if there is that, you know, a moment in time, mm. and there will be moments in time where you turn around and say, I'm not where I want to be right now, and I've only got X amount of weeks left before I leave. Because that was happening closer to, when I had my injury, that was more like I was like, oh no, I've just knocked off two weeks off my, me going hard at it and trying to lose more. And I, what came to my mind is really, you don't know where you're going till you know where you've been. You know, and it's true. So as long as you remember, I know I was better off yesterday. Mm. I was better off today than I was yesterday. It's it's hard not to have that kind of. I'm gonna put. I'm I'm achieving one thing at a time, right? Like. Is that how you managed your mindset when you were injured? Right. And also when you were sick. Right. Like when you were dehydrated. Is that how you managed your mindset around those two events? Because you said to yourself. I am, even though I'm not well, I'm here in this country, I'm better off now right. than what I was 100%. in the corporate job that I wasn't 100%, happy in. 100%. Is that, you use that perspective shift. 100%. That's and how you got through it. I, almost, 
almost, and I'm conscious and aware what I've done, mm -hmm. because my, my mind was very, it's almost I tricked myself mm. to thinking that um, everything's all good. Mm. It's only a little, you mm. know, it's just a little thing that's happened. I'll be back in training I'll in no time. I'll be back in training, right. So when you, when you turn around and have that mentality, you're like, okay, for you to really feel like it. And then th there was times I was, I was getting up and I was falling back on the bed. You know, Jeez. yeah, because I remember doing the first training and the next day I was like getting out of bed and I just felt the stiffness of the foot and it almost like I fell back onto the bed. Mm. And it was almost in that moment I was like, yeah, but we know what happens if I don't do anything. Mm. We don't know what happens if I carry on. I think that's my perspective always. I think if, and if you, you guys always know what happens if we stop training. We do eat fast food, we do that, we know, but we don't know what really happens mm. or where we could be mm. if, we, um, if we carry on. Mm. So just carry on. It doesn't matter how small it is, doesn't matter how much uh, you, craziness that's going on back home, doesn't matter what your atmosphere is, um, what your environment's entailing, just remember that you have to carry on one step at a time. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If mm. on that day all you can do is walk, mm. walk. Get up and walk. If you're, if, you're, if you're sitting on the side of the bed, which I've done quite a bit of, this, do dips. Do dips. Do dips. 100% help me. Get those triceps going. Right, right. Uh, when, uh, if you can't, and if I couldn't do, and if I couldn't do push-ups, I was literally doing them on the knees. Mm. Right? Something. something, just mm. something, little, them little things later on down the line add up, like I realise so much they add up and, and the satisfaction is I still done something, even if you're feeling completely bad, at least I done something, mm. I think that kind of changed and I think even before, even before this journey I've always had that, I was like, I know if I carry on with something, um, I don't know what the outcome is, I want to see what the outcome is. Mm. I want to see, because I know what happens if I stop, nothing happens. Mm. I'm back in the same, I'm, I'm, I'm in the same situation. As yeah. some people say, the same rut of the yeah. situation. And that's one thing, just carry on guys. All right guys, so what yeah. happened was the GoPro cut out, the battery died, so I don't know how long that video is. So we're just going to pick it up from where we left off with the bigger camera here. A little bit fancier setup, not really, it's just a camera with a big fat microphone. <laughs> What's, what's something that you've enjoyed the most about being out here for two months? The atmosphere is, has to be one of the best things I've ever experienced. The training atmosphere. The training atmosphere, but the energy, because I thrive off energy. I realise as a person... I mean, you have a lot of energy, man. <laughs> I know, I know. I don't, I don't know how to deplete it all. <laughs> are you like this back home in the UK? You are? Yeah. And number two, second biggest, um, second biggest thing. So the training atmosphere is number one, and then the people. The community. Right. The people. <laughs> the community, 100%. It's like probably one of the uh, coolest communities. Um, Why? Because you can speak to anybody about anything. It feels like everybody's a PT as well, a little bit. Um, but really, they give you their perspective. It's not, when I say, um, it feels like everybody's a PT, meaning that they give their personal experience mm. of what their journey's been. And nearly everybody does that. Like, I haven't seen a single person. Like, I've met some cool people who've seemed like they're completely stiff and cold. Mm -hmm. And suddenly that, it's just like, maybe it's me probing them a bit, but they turn around and say, oh, this was what I was before. And this is what my journey is. And I almost like the people's, um, approach to what we're trying to do out here yeah right um and generally i like the positivity i mm. think the third one is the positivity mm -hmm. there's a lot of negative to be had like there's a lot of negative to be had when you have an injury if we had an injury back home everyone everybody in the months is going to know about it <laughs> right and it, it and it kind of like it doesn't just put a damper on the day or the month, it puts a damper on the whole year. You know, when something bad happens, right? Yeah. Here, it has the same thing. Mm. However, you feel like there's more of a community, that ties in with the second one, where you have more of a community aspect where it's more positive, yes. where you see somebody and you'd be like, oh, okay, um, 
the it's almost like glowing of ah, we've got to be positive we're out here you know and the sun, and the sun helps as well i think the vitamin d makes me kind of go overload but so when <laughs> so yeah. when you do if you do get injured out here yeah. in my experience right. being in this community has been super helpful because i mean people come around like to my room and like give me painkillers because i don't have the energy or the strength right uh to go out and get it myself so like you know right. oh mate do you need you know i saw that you weren't in class today is everything okay right yeah. or like i haven't seen you for a few days is everything all right right um oh, actually, i actually have been food poisoned or i've had an injury oh right. i'll drop some voltaren off at your room or something like that right and so right. I mean, not that that wouldn't happen. Off, that, I, I'm sure that <laughs> it would happen. I'm, I'm sure it happened back home in your home country. But like, these are people that were like you only literally met the week before. Right. 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 So right. the people back home, when you get injured, they're like your mom, your parents, your brother, sister, or maybe work colleagues, or whatever. But when you come out here and you train, and if you were to get injured or food poisoned, you'd have like this, this new community of mates that you only met just very, very recently. They're all like trying to help you out and like. You know, and if, even if it's like emotional shit that you're going through, right? Yeah, they'll be like, 100%. "Oh mate, let's go to Ali's barbecue. <laughs> yeah, right. let's, let's, talk <laughs> let's, talk let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this." That one thing out here is amazing. And it's a bit like a counselling right. session, but you're, you're doing these counselling sessions with like guys you you barely know, man. Like, <laughs> you just met them like three weeks ago. And you're telling them your life story, like all your exes and all. <laughs> It's, it's so true. true. It's true. It's isn't so it? true. Spot on. It's like Spot on. she's done this to me, or he's done that to me, and it's like my boss has done this, and, oh, and then you're like, <laughs> I'm like, then you go home back to your hotel room, you're like, I just can't believe I told this person yeah. my whole marriage or relationship or divorce or yeah. work crisis, and I've only known them for a week. <laughs> Not me personally, like, this, but this is what other people we know. It's so true. Yeah, it's, it's true. true it's isn't spot it? on. It's so yeah, spot yeah, yeah, yeah. on. So that's, that's the thing about community. That's right. Right. about the community i think that's probably um, the best like mm. uh, one of the best aspects as well because like like brad said literally <laughs> at a certain point in the day um everyone does try to finish somewhat reasonably mm. like i realized uh where i was doing morning and then late evening it's come down to more i'm finishing at like one or two mm. shower up and the rest of the day is let's go out Let's go out on the soil. Let's just, you know, even if we're doing a walk, so you're walking with someone, someone's telling you, come and eat now. Oh, I know you're about to, um, uh, I know you're doing intimate fasting. So, and I know this is your window. So I haven't eaten because of you. So it's almost like you can't even escape it, right? It's like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go and eat. And then you're really going through something. Some people are out here for whatever reason. Everyone's got some sort of story, something that they're combating no matter how big or small and they come out here and it's almost like everybody's kind of in that kind of frame of mind as well right it's we all got something going on you can talk to each other about it you do me and it's not because i do want to emphasize that when you do end up coming out here and you do partake in the classes or whatever it might be just being out on the soil just being in the atmosphere uh, oh, sorry. In the environment, you're gonna meet, you're gonna meet people. That is just like it's just like almost second. It's almost second nature to. I think it could, it could be my journeys, like you said. Um, I'm quite a friendly guy, so I don't know if that played a part. But I've seen people who've only been here for maybe they're only here for a week, and they met so many friends. Mm. You know, and could get just partaking in the classes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's very common to meet people in like classes here and then you become friends for life. Right. You start right. planning future trips together. Right, right, 100%. Right. PP Island over the weekend. Yeah, or you, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a lot of that or you, you, plan, you plan mini adventures together here in Thailand. 100%. Like jump yeah. on a boat cruise or something. Yeah, and, yeah. And the guys from your class, and you go out on a boat cruise together. Right. You go scuba diving together. Right. Like, or you, you go, oh, you might even come back, come from the same country. 100%. And some, there was one case where <laughs> there was two people, they crossed paths, they went to the same school. But they were like three years apart or something. Wow. Same school, three years apart or something like that. Wow. Yeah, they lived in the same village. They were almost neighbors, like one street across. They were three years apart in school and they met each other out here. 
I don't know where that, how that ended, but right. like, that's a pretty crazy, that's like, crazy. It's such a small world, right? Right. When right. you're seeing that kind of thing, it doesn't happen very often like that. The, but that's pretty epic, that story. Right. There yeah. are crossovers here, and you will meet a lot of people here when you come out here. And to your point, a lot of people say the same thing when I ask, you know, top three things. They'll always say, usually community yeah. is up in the top three. The yeah. people you meet out here, the connections, the the stories, yes. yes, the positivity, um, that's there as well. Yeah, um, but the stories, as I, the stories, I, it yeah. ties in, right? Yeah, um, yeah, but, and that the, is true. And one of, the, and one of the things we can't, the food, so moderately clean, straight to the point. You know, if you if you're out here and you're literally saying I want chicken breast, then the broccoli and uh, uh, steamed veggies, they'll turn around and give you exactly yeah, you what got, you want. <laughs> you've got the best food out here in terms right, of nutrition. So fresh, yeah. Like you've got the best food choices out here on Fitness Street. Right. I've made plenty of videos on that. Check them out on the 100%. Like, and the, that, that, that definitely comes hand in hand at some point. Yeah. So, so in that eating point, healthy yeah. at a fraction of the price you pay Look, back home. That's it. Right. You know? 100%. And it's, and it's so readily available. Yeah. Right. Mm. It's like we're not seeking oh where we're gonna go for the healthiest restaurant. Let's go find this one restaurant that's in the city that seems to be just advertising healthy restaurants. This whole street. Whole street. Full of it. <laughs> no exaggeration. And even the guys for um, keto. Yes. Cheeky keto. Cheeky keto. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Cheeky keto. <laughs> I haven't been in there actually. I've right. walked past it. I've, I've, I've just I had a glance at the menu and it's like they got pizzas that are keto. They got. This. I, I, is that right? Yeah. That makes sense. Right, right. Keto pizzas. Keto pizzas. There you go, guys. So <laughs> let's wrap it up. Right. Yeah. It's been a super long video <laughs> and I applaud everyone who's gotten this far. Thank you. Honestly, don't know how long this video is going to be after editing, <laughs> but. Nevertheless, it's flowed very well. The conversations flowed, so we'll let it go the length of time that it needs to be uh, to inspire more people to come out here and train, yes. taste the lifestyle here. Yeah. Any parting shots? Yeah. Um, Final shots. I'm going to give you a minute. Okay, because you know it's going to take. <laughs> you know it's going to be an hour at this point. <laughs> I'm just going to give you a minute. Okay. Um, parting shots. 100%. Guys, please come out here. 100% come out here. Please don't have any fear whatsoever um, when, you, uh, when you do get out here. And the big thing is, when you do lose, um, start losing weight, and you do start gaining, if not losing weight, gaining weight, it could be bulking, whatever it might be, and you're not fully there, just remember you're better off today than you were yesterday. And um, I hope to see you guys out here, man. Definitely. And if and girls, <laughs> um, and ultimately, just remember, um, any guidance or any help you want, um, either Brad or me, I'll try to help you as much as I can. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to help you as much as I can. And, um, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I got another one, actually, sorry. I'll yeah. jump in there. Yeah, yeah. So I'll give you a minute and a half. 100%. <laughs> so join the Fitness Street Facebook group. I'll link it up down below. Uh, are you part of the yes, group? Yes, I am. Yeah. Yes. So I'm actually stepping away from that because it's, it was taking up a lot of my time. But it's got a moderator on now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hats off to Rosie for taking the role uh, to help with the group. But basically, people jump in the group there. They meet each other through the group. They ask questions if you're not sure of things. I don't know everything, right? And things change a lot. Yes. But there are there are people in the group that yeah. will have the answer to what you're asking. 100% the group. Oh, yeah. that's, I don't know how that slipped my mind. The fitness group. The right, fitness group. I, I, asked, I asked a couple of questions before um, I came out here. Just on, you know, even regards to like visas, just understanding if I'm staying here for long. Literally, I'm nowhere to rely. Within like a few hours, I had like two, three responses. Yeah. But I was so like, yeah. good information. Good like, information. <laughs> good information. Yeah. Like, straight to the point. Yeah. Or, or a nod in the right direction yeah. for, for um, what, what you're trying to do. So 100% uh, the Fitness Street um, community. Join the group, ask your questions. And if you really are still intimidated about coming out here on your own yeah. as a solo female traveler or even a solo guy, yes. coming out even after hearing your uh, testimony of how, how he felt, yeah. uh, then join the group because there'll be, nonetheless, there's going to be at least one person coming out here when you Right. When you decide That's, to come, yes. you decide, oh, who's going to be in, on Fitness Street between right. 
in June to July, or there's going to be at least one person. Right, yeah, yeah. And then absolutely. you can exchange details and. And it is really comfort, comforting in that uh, group as well, guys, yeah. because you feel like you can see, oh, this person's like, I'm planning to come out this time. Yeah. Um, is anybody around just to show me around? Da, da, da. Even little things like that, it's all in the group. It's all in the group. So yeah. essentially, but guys, 100% come out here. You won't regret it. Um, and yeah, I, I don't want to keep you guys from our three hour video, but <laughs> but um, you're really, you're, you're gonna really enjoy it. And um, stay strong. Thanks guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave them also down in the comments below. Uh, thanks again for supporting the channel. And uh, yeah, reach out to this man's Instagram. I'll yeah. throw it up on screen and down in the description below. Uh, I'll chuck mine up somewhere around, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye guys. Oh man. Well done. Oh crap. Well done. <laughs> I might, I'll keep the camera rolling. I might even put this in the outro. So. <laughs> oh you, okay, yeah. If they want to keep watching, they can keep watching. 100 percent yeah, nah, that, You did well. It, nah, it, it's it's definitely like it's really eye-opening. Um even reflecting back on our like journey out here. It's surreal, like a, even going backwards a bit. Like, but I'm so glad I came out. Like, I'm so glad it opened my mind. Now it's a place in like, and also you feel like there's a place in the world where you can come solely for this goal. There's not a lot of places in the world that you know. People say fitness mecca, Venice Beach, <laughs> go to California, right? Um, this is so different, though. right? Mm. This is some, so, and it's so crazy. It, I've done my best, you know, over the years to to make all these videos to try and communicate right. how special this place is. Right. And I don't think I've hit it on the head. I don't think I've really fully nailed it. I don't, yeah, and I I don't, don't think I've fully nailed it. I don't know how, yeah. Like, even, even, like... You should, I mean, like, they say the book is not the territory, right? Right. Heard that saying? I heard that saying. The right. book is not the territory. <laughs> yeah. So no matter how many books you read on something, <laughs> unless you actually experience it, you'll never know. Like if you read about push-ups, yes. if all you do is read about push-ups, it doesn't mean you can do a push-up. <laughs> right, right. It just means you know a lot about push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> you actually got to do the push-up to actually get the territory. So the book is, the map is not the territory. That's so it. like, I think with the videos that I continue to make seven years later, yeah. I'm really just essentially creating a book of content, but it's not the territory. Like people, you got to come out here. 100%. You got to taste it. Yeah. And then you'll know. Right. And then you're like, oh, that's, he said that in the videos or, right. or he didn't say that. Because I, I, I can't capture everything. I don't know. Like, I've tried. It's, I just, I'm a one man band doing this, you know? Like, I'm, shit. I'm on my own doing this. Nah, 100%. And I try and interview different cohorts to try and spin the content for a certain type of demographic. Right? It's true. So I'll try and get a professional fighter on, I'll try and get someone who's never been to the gym before, I'll try and get someone who, you know, was on drugs and they've cleaned themselves up. Right. I'll try and get someone who's suicidal right. to come on and share their story. Right. You know, but it's really hard. It now. is hard. To, and I, res I full. That's why I got so much respect for you because coming out here, I realized, I think even more so, who you're trying to aim at, and it's literally every. I'm trying to hit different yeah. angles. Right, so it's like every yeah. demographic you can sort of just a little hit on it yeah. that can at least drive the. Because all I realize, all we really need from each demographic is like seven to eight people to come out to be like, wow, this is amazing. Go back home and it spreads the word, right? All because of the video that they might have saw on Fitness Street, right? It, and it and it happened. It definitely. It definitely happened for me, and I know it happened for a lot of guys, even um, the guy we met earlier. Yeah. Like, it, it opened, you, like, you opened a lot of the right, um, you ticked a lot of the right boxes, but I know what you're saying about nailing it on the head. It's hard, like, in my head, I thought I'll get loads of content on the street, even going around and, like, trying to sort of think, and I realised, Even doing it, I can see it all right. Now I understand what the trials and tribulations for Brad was. Because it's almost like you can't get everything. No. And, it's like, and, the thing and things is, don't fall into place the way sometimes you're... Well, you're that's, it. Yeah. that's right. And the thing is, when you're making content, 
you always got to think about who you're making it for. Right. You know, when I first started the journey of making videos and whatnot, like I didn't really understand what I was, who I was making it for. Right. I was making it for myself. Hundred percent. And what I was like, what I really enjoy making. Hundred percent. But then over the like last few years, I've become a little bit more strategic. I'm like, before I turn the camera on, I only think about who it's for. Right. I'm like, who is it for? In the first. And, I, and I've got to make that clear in the first 20 seconds of the video. 100%. If I can't, if, I, if the audience I have in my mind, if I can't get that out in the first 10 seconds of the video right. to that person, then I've lost. Yeah, that's no matter, such a good thought. Yeah. That's such a good so thought like, process, when actually. I was, when I was like... But it was plays on your mind as well. When, I, when, I, when, I, when I bring in professional fighters right. to do like interviews and whatnot, or film them, I'm only thinking about the main thing yeah. is to get more of these guys to come out. Right. Yeah. Like you, like when you uh, got uh, Pap. Yeah, or Pap. You know Pap? Yeah. I saw him through your story. Yeah. And I went and approached him. I said, yo, I saw your Brad's video. But bro. I got him on because I want to get more people from That's Af what I'm saying. From Africa yeah, to yeah, come yeah. out. Yeah, And when I was re referencing Africa, I was trying to reference him. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had a feeling you know, when yeah. you said that in the video. <laughs> I was and I wanted to say Senegal, but I didn't want to be Pacific. I wanted Africa yeah, that yeah. people would be like. I, I was thinking when you said that in the video, I'm like, <laughs> I think he's talking about Pap here. <laughs> Pap's from Senegal. Yeah. But I, I, I interviewed Pap and I've done a little bit of content with him. I haven't made the full video yet. Okay. Well, I will, but it's to get. But before I, I spoke to him, my intention was to get more people. Because he came from the videos too, right? Yeah. He's from Senegal, West Africa. So it's like, man, I want to get more people from West Africa to come right, out here. Hey, man, right. So, like, when I do the hook on that video, yeah. I'm literally going to have. In the first 10 seconds, right. hey guys, we have Pap here right. from West Africa, right. from Senegal, right. training here on Fitness Street Talking with or whatever. Right. And then that video is going to be for that demographic specifically. It's so epic. Not man. for the British audience. Right. Not for the 100%. Not for the South. And that's the America, way, man. Not for Central America, not for the Mexicans. Right. It's for more of the Senegalese, West African, or Africa, and more of those people to come out. Yeah. And then when I get like, um, professional fighters to come on you know I'm trying to get more of them yeah. to come out yeah like when I did some stuff with PDR and Ar Ar right. Zurich and these other UFC guys is to get other UFC guys yeah to look at these videos and go you know what I want to do my camp there right because PDR's done his camp there or Armin Zurichens or Darren Till yeah or whatever right. they've done that I want I want to do my camp there too yeah. so I make that video for the UFC guy, or the one championship guy, or whatever. Or like if I'm interviewing people that have never been to the gym before, is to get more of that type of person to come out. So it's all long-winded to basically say that before... Does that play on your mind sometimes though? Always that, plays on my mind. I can imagine. It, that, it's 24-7. Like, like I only, before I turn the camera on, I only think about who am I making it for? Who's this reaching? Who's right. this reaching? 